Hi, and welcome to this unboxing of Arctic uh, EVA 3D scan. So here we, we have the box. Um, it's a nice box, so let's cut it open. And we'll see what's inside. Slim box. That's like this. So you have the uh, letter that contains your license and uh, welcoming letter. Gives you some instructions on how to download and install the license. So that's great. Let's put that away. Um, in the box, we have the packaging here. Um, we have, of course, one of the USB cables. I have actually two USB cables along with the power cord and of course the all important power brick so let's put that away and all the power supplies here and then of course the main unit which is the 3D scanner so that's all in the box, I will put it away. Here you have a well packaged Arctic EVA 3D scanner. And there it is. to use uh, it's it's very light um, it feels good it has a good grip um, actually a very good grip you can have a lot of different angles when you're scanning it's always good to um, move the scan around to, so that you can reach different areas so there's a lot of uh, mounting options here to to get below things and um, on the scanner itself, we have, of course, the um, the cameras and the projector. So we have one of the texture um, the texture scanner, which has um, a, a ring-based flash. So you won't get the shadow parts when, when scanning um, um, uh, textures. Um, on the previous models, you had um, the camera flash from side. So when the, when the, the scanner was taking textures, it would um, create some shadows on, on some kind of parts um, because you had the light from the side. So with this scanner you had the light all around, uh, so you won't get those shadows. You also have the projector which creates this unique pattern um, that the two cameras can then track in real time and, um, and, and analyze to, to get uh, 3D point data. Um, on the bottom side of the scanner you have two um, uh, ports, one is for uh, uh, in port and one is for out and this is for um, connecting several scanners and making them work in serial. So you can have, um, I think it's up to four scanners which would um, 
be perfect if you're scanning a, a human and scanning motions and so on. So you can actually set them up around an object and scan this object in real time um, actually filming in 3D data. So you can have up to uh, uh, 15 frames per second um, or even more if you have a more powerful computer but you can actually film um, 3D mesh. It's not 3D like the normal um, what you see in the movies, it's actually 3D data mesh th that is being uh, recorded. So that's great if you have several solutions. Um, uh, you can combine this with the um, Arctic different scanners as well. Um, so that's very good. You also have a camera uh, mount. So you can mount this on uh, a, um, a tripod, for example, if you want to have a stationary system. Uh, on the side here, you have the connection port for the USB cable. Um, as well as the power cord uh, on the back here. Uh, we also have an uh, inlet for air so that the, the whole unit can be cool. On the left side um, there's nothing really. Um, on the back side you have two buttons. One is to start recording and one is to stop record basically. Uh, and you can also pause and you can um, uh, resume the scan as well. On the top here you have a fan for uh, keeping everything cool inside. So you have the, the air flowing um, through through the all the, the cameras and the projector, all the elements. Uh, there's also an optional um, battery pack which you can um, use instead of using the power supply. So you can have a battery pack um, connected to the, um, uh, the computer which you can also have a battery on. So you can actually be totally mobile with this solution. And it's very light, it's around, um, I think it's a few kilos, but yeah, it's very light. And down here on the scanner, you just plug in the USB cable, make sure that it's tight. that the cable goes through the channel over there. And after that, you plug in the power cord on the back here. And the scanner will start blinking, as you can see. So then we want to go to Arctic Installation Center and activate the scanner. So let's open it. And you can see we have a few um, licenses here, but this one is the one that is not activated. So let's do that. it's activating and we can close this and open up Arctic Studio and here we have it so let's go to settings to make sure that we have the right scanner connected and let's go to scan and we'll add this type of scanner um, it's it's good already so let's go to scan and make sure that we have the right scanner connected yeah the arctic scanner ev and then we're actually ready to go. Um, so the software here, uh, as you can see, you have the scan um, bottom, the editor, the tools, align, and, and all the tools here. Um, I won't go through all the settings in this video. I will probably make another video on how to scan with, with uh, Arctic Studio. Um, but I want to show you how it looks when, you're, uh, when you start scanning. Um, so just give me a second.
So here we have the scanner, and on the back side then we can click on, on, on uh, the start button. As you can see, it's it's a lot, it's very quick. And on the screen you can see um, the preview. So what we're actually doing now is to scan my MakerBot over here. Um, so we have the preview, you can see on the bar on the left side, you have a range indicator, so when I'm going closer, um, you won't really get, get any data, but when I'm moving back, you will have uh, good data. So you want to stay in the in the mid region. So I can now click on the scan button again on the back side, and we'll start scanning. So in this scan mode, we're actually reading in um, several frames uh, each second, but we're not creating a mesh. Let's keep scanning here. I have some glass inside of this box, so that's quite difficult to scan. Uh, but you see how I move around and I always try to have some uh, some files in, in in range to be able to track on. Okay, so let's uh, let's stop there and click on the stop button again. And there we have it. So here's the 3D model where actually it's a bunch of frames as, as you can see. So this scanner is, um, is scanning uh, frames basically. So th this is how you can use it when you want to um, want to be able to, to um, track uh, and to film in 3D. But yeah, there we have it. Uh, I will show you another scan mode as well, which is called real-time fusion. Um, so let's do, I will actually lower the frame rates because we're scanning too much basically. Um, yeah, so pick up the scanner. As you can see I have two bottoms here, I have the, the start scan and the, the pause and then stop scan. So what I'll do here is, uh, you can see I have a few boxes over here. I will click on the play. As you can see in the software it's um, starting. Oops. I think I clicked it twice. Um, but yeah, as you can see in the software, it's reading in all these data and scanning at the same time. It's difficult to see from, from the, the camera's point of view. And when we feel that we're finished, uh, it is quite difficult to both scan and to hold the scanner at the same time. Uh, so we click on pause. And what we've done now is that we've paused, so we can actually unpause if we go to the same spot again. And there you have it. You can continue a scan by doing that. So if you if you need to rearrange or somehow move around, you can do that. And when we're finished, we can then click on the stop bottom on it. And there we have it. That's the finished scan with Arctic Eva. So let's go back to the software. And if we stop here, um, there we have it. So we actually get a few scans here, so I will remove them and only use diffusion. So there you have it. This is yeah a very rough scan, um, but as you can see, it's uh, very accurate. You can see the different patterns on the, on the carton boxes. You can see all the dents, and um, yeah, this is a quick fusion. So this mesh is a quick fusion. You can do this with a lot more precision, and uh, that's about it. Um, so I hope you liked it. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give, give it a thumbs down. And if you have any questions, please just drop a comment. I also want to thank Creative Tools in Sweden for providing the equipment. And make sure to check out their um, link in the description to learn more about Creative Tools and the equipment they offer. Hope to see you next time. Bye.